All right. Ah. Uh, Ow, oh, ow, oh, ow, oh, what are you gonna do? Ow, oh, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Ow, oh, oh, no, okay, no, yeah, no, this this spray is not for me. And, like, we're told that the Earth is spinning at a thousand miles per hour, which is awfully fast, but yet, let's say a helicopter cannot just hover in the air for 12 hours, you know, start in St. Louis, Missouri, hover for 12 hours, and land in China with the Earth spinning below it, and that is what you know, I would first think would be the situation. But then we're told because we're in the sphere, it all moves relative to itself and you don't notice those changes. And there was much rejoicing. And see, I'm not a physicist. I'm not a pilot. And so it's hard for me to really play devil's advocate for their position. But I think about if you're in a speeding car going 90 miles an hour down the highway, you can play catch with the passenger and it feels like you're stationary. Wow, uh, okay, that's actually a good point. Or like if an ant is crawling around on your dashboard, whether it's going with the grain of the car or with or against, it doesn't really notice that effect. So it's like, um, you know, I guess I would think that the atmosphere would have the same effect as the encapsulation of that vehicle moving at a fast speed. To the people inside of it, they don't notice. And I guess that's the argument, but do you find... Do you find flaws with that argument? Yeah, because once again, it's explaining away your common sense and your experience, which is that you're not moving whatsoever. And so they say, oh, yes. That's, odd. That's I how wealthy people laugh. I wouldn't have oh! <laughs> You are moving, silly, but you're just moving at a, such a constant velocity that you don't notice it whatsoever. Acceleration is required to feel force, not velocity, as seen in Newton's equations of Oh, wait, wasn't it an evil Jew lizard mason that invented the laws of physics? Never mind then. Sorry I had a fight in the middle of your Black Panther party. Now, even if you're in the, the best Rolls Royce over the best tar, uh, you know, smoothly going, you close your eyes, I can still tell I'm moving, and that's not going a thousand miles per hour, that's just going 50 or whatever we're, we're talking about here. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. I know I do some low energy debunking here, but this is taking shit to an entirely different level. The earth doesn't spin because I can hear my car's tires when I drive. Yes, indeed, it looks like he's going to stop. Oh my goodness sakes. Even in an elevator, just an elevator going up, I can feel that. I have a, a really sensitive stomach, so I mean, I can tell and I get sick if, you know, if I'm doing some sort of motion that's anything on par with what the Earth is supposedly doing. And so isn't that weird that uh, just because it's a perfect constant velocity that my stomach's able to handle that, but just a, a, a little bit of a elevator malfunction and, and then I'm ready to, you know. <laughs> I never thought that during my illustrious YouTube career, I would be tasked with responding to someone's weak stomach. This argument is so pathetic and unsubstantial, I'm at a loss if I should even respond. If I say to you that I cannot feel movement when on an airplane, does that hold equal weight? Did I just prove that the earth spins? What it is, big mama, my mama raise no dummies, I duck a rap. So these things don't make any sense. They, they just want to explain away your common sense with these kind of arguments. And like you said, if you were in a helicopter, you should be able to just go up, wait for the ball earth to spin underneath you and land at your destination. But of course, the atmosphere spins with the ball earth, so that doesn't happen. Shut up, baby, I know it. But we can prove that that's not the case either, because now we have airplanes, which you can go easterly or westerly, and if the Earth and the atmosphere are spinning a thousand miles per hour east all the way, all the time, as they say, then a westbound plane should be, well, well an eastbound plane should never reach its destination if it was going 500 miles per hour and the Earth is spinning and the atmosphere is spinning a thousand miles. Standing on the Earth, you are motionless with respect to the Earth. Any motion on Earth 
and with respect to the Earth, such as an airplane, does not need to take into account the rotation of the Earth when calculating speed. If your motion is with respect to the Earth but not on Earth, for example a satellite, then the Earth's rotation needs to be accounted for. For a plane and a satellite to travel the same distance with respect to Earth, the satellite would need to travel at least an order of magnitude faster than the airplane. For example, let's say you are walking on a train from caboose to engine. You do not need to know the speed of the train to calculate how long it will take you to walk the train. If someone in a car next to the train was to match your speed, they would first need to match the speed of the train and then add your walking speed. Your destination should come up behind you before you ever reach it, right? And then destinations going the opposite way are going to take far, far longer than they, they do. Bullshit. You can check flight times and they're always within a half hour, hour, a couple hours, whether, no matter what direction you're going to or from. But if the Earth was actually spinning at the rate that they say it was, flight times would be totally different. Remember, Eric Dubay is the biggest name in the Flat Earth movement. Boss, head man, top dog, big cheese, a head honcho. Captain, number look at this. If he cannot grasp easy concepts like this, what does that say about the entire Flat Earth movement? It makes sense, but yet I've been taught from an early age not to trust myself because they've got it on lock, so I just assume that the, the physics all kind of works out. I've done the math. Checks out. But I know there are people who go to school for physics. You know, they study it for years and years, and it's just odd that none of them ever catch on to it, that I guess that guys like Newton created this entire fake science around a fake model and yet all the math checks out that's a little hard for me to rectify well they're counting on that that's why they've got all these <laughs> huge formulas and calculations for gravity and whatnot that are based on nothing based on nothing are you kidding me the laws of gravity are based on observation and experimentation as in high school physics level observation and experimentation so then they set about this and they, you know, they say, oh, this is going to be impossible. But then within 10 or 15 minutes, all the groups over the past, well, 16 years, I guess, that I've been doing this are able to get the right thing. Okay, so if I roll the ball down the ramp now, we'll hear, we'll, hopefully we'll hear that it's equal time intervals between little clicks. Huge formulas and calculations, <laughs> huge formulas and calculations, <laughs> huge formulas and calculations. That was so terrible, I think you gave me cancer! So like they've got a weight for the ball earth, all based on their gravity calculations, and you can Wikipedia, Wikipedia it, and you'll see pages of, you know, mathematic language that makes no sense to 99.9% .9 of the population. It's alive! A gigantic beast! Docking the earth, crushing all before it in a cyclonic cavalcade of electrifying horror, <laughs> raging through the streets on a rampage of total destruction. But apparently the math works out, so it's real, right? So it's just another way, just like the CGI images or whatever. Some people are fooled by the images. Some people are fooled by the math. Some people are, are fooled by, you know, this or that. They've got many different ways to uh, to get us in their grips. Like you said, they're...